at the end of the day, if you're really proficient with your color work in Procreate, you'll be able to move things through really quickly, complete pieces much faster, or even just do really basic artwork and know what you're doing when it comes to color and utilizing some of these techniques, it really can take your artwork and drawings to the next level. All right, we're back with another video. Everyone who's returning, thank you so much for coming back. All of the new viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe down the bottom if you do like the content here today. It helps me grow and bring you more content each and every week. All right, enough of that. Let's jump in. Today we're looking at utilizing some techniques within Procreate, which can help speed up when you're using color within Procreate. This can be whether you're working on multiple layers or not, even though I do suggest you do work with multiple layers when it does come to color. Let's jump in, have a look at a few things that I like to do within my artwork. I've been doing these for a while now and they really help me move faster through pieces, make me more efficient and really just get pieces done in a much faster time frame and allow me to go a little bit further with my color as well. So let's jump in and have a look at the very first technique, which is utilizing layers when you're working in Procreate. This is one of the areas where I've really been able to go a lot further with my artwork over the last couple of years. And it really is super important to be able to consider the whole flow and look of a piece. Let's have a look here at the overhead view. When you are creating your artwork, as you can see this piece here I'm working on, really cool line of drawings I'm doing based around Jordan shoes. As you can see here, I've got a few things going on in this design. I have the shoe obviously in the middle, I've got the number. I've also got these flowers around the outside. Now, like I said, utilizing different layers is what's gonna allow me to make adjustments as I go and come back and revisit parts and make edits or redo pieces if I don't want to redo the whole layer for that object. I'll give you an example. This piece here, there's four flowers. Let's tap into my layers panel and you're going to see here I've got a group already created and it's for flower color. There is one, two, three, four different flowers or roses I've been working on. I've got this one turned off here. Let's turn it back on. That's the color that I created, but I'm gonna recreate this to show you what I would normally do. So let's turn that off for a second. And as you can see here, each flower is able to be selected and turned off and on, but it allows me to go back and make changes to each of these flowers because I'm doing them one at a time. And if I need to make changes, I can go in and if I'm doing this individually, I'm not gonna change the look and feel of all of them. And if I maybe do one that isn't up to the others, I can go in and make changes specifically to that one. So this can be really, really important. I know this seems super simple, but hey, sometimes the best tips and tricks are the really simple ones. If you're not already utilizing layers when you are coloring within Procreate, please start. It really does make a difference. And depending on what canvas properties you set for each of your artworks, is gonna determine how many layers you can work with. If you do wanna hear more about this, please visit the link. It's appearing on the top of the screen right now. That'll take you to a video I did recently, which breaks this down just a little bit more. But let's move straight along and look at the next tip when it comes to coloring with Procreate, and that is reference layers. Yes, I've talked about reference layers many, many months ago in another video I did. Again, card at the top of the screen if you do want to check that out. But I do think it's really important when we are looking at a video like this and talking about tips when it does come to coloring because it really can speed up the workflow when you are trying to pack in some color in the early stages and trying to figure out the overall look of your piece. Let's have a look again at the overhead view and see exactly what I'm talking about. So this is my design here. It's looking really, really nice. And as you can see on the very top, I've got a layer there titled outline. If I turn that on and off, obviously that is my outline layer. Pretty straightforward, love that, super simple. Now let's go ahead and recreate this rose here. If I turn it on and off, it's this one right here. I wanna show you how utilizing the outline as a reference layer can really speed up what you're gonna do. Let's tap on layer 24 hit the plus, create a layer of the top, and let's jump straight in. What we're gonna do before we get out of the layers panel is we're gonna tap on outline, we're gonna tap on it again, and we're gonna select reference. Now, this layer has been turned into a reference layer, and I know what you're thinking, Rocket, what is a reference layer? Essentially, whatever we do below this piece here, it's gonna directly reference the layer above it. Therefore, if there are outlines and you wanna drop some color in, it's only gonna affect parts of that design which are constrained within that outline. I'll show you what I mean. Let's tap back on layer 31 where we decided we were gonna recreate this rose here. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can tap on our colors and maybe we'll choose this red here. Seems pretty good to me. Make sure we got a nice big brush on. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and start coloring. And what I see most people do, and what is very, very common, is when you are starting with Procreate, or maybe you've been using Procreate for a while and haven't utilized this technique yet, 
we're just going to start coloring in the rows that we want. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Cool, we've got some color down there. It's not affecting our outline, perfect. We can grab an eraser and then we can come in and we can cut that out. Pretty straightforward, very basic, but you can imagine when you've got a really big piece going on, you've got a lot of elements in there, you are really uh, got a lot going on um, and you need to really move fast. I'll show you a much better way. So we're gonna tap on layers panel, tap on layer 31 and we're just gonna clear it. And as you can remember, we made our outline layer, our reference layer, this is fantastic. So now with layer 31 selected, it's clear, which is good. We're gonna tap on the layers panel again and instead of painting, we're gonna press and hold with Apple Pencil on the color selection circle, just at the top here, this one. And then we're gonna drag it into one of these empty fields here in the flower. And as you can see, it's gonna auto populate the area with that color but it's gonna stay constrained within that original outline. Nice, quick, simple, efficient. We're already moving on. Tap on the layers panel. And then if we press and hold on the checkbox there, we're gonna turn off everything around it and we can see exactly what it's done. It's filled in those constrained areas of the outline layer, but it hasn't actually affected the outline layer because it's on its own layer and it's the reference. So it's referencing that but we're just getting the color we need on our new layer. All these tips and tricks are up to you, but please have a look at this one. This one is probably one of the biggest game changers out there. It's very, very basic, but it really can speed things up and allow you to create so many different layers with so many different elements of your design on it. And then you can go back and affect those uh, by themselves at a later date. All right, let's press and hold back on that checkbox and everything's gonna come back, which is fantastic. And now we have a nice little red rose there. It's, it's a little bit out of the color scheme of the other roses, but we're gonna see a little bit later on exactly what we're gonna do about that and, and why we wanna create these on their own layers. Which brings me to the next tip I have for coloring within Procreate, and that is using clipping masks. I've talked about using clipping masks before. Again, link at the top of the page here if you do wanna check that one out. But it is really important because now that we have our layer here with our fill in it, we wanna affect this layer and we wanna make changes to this layer, but we wanna do it fast. We wanna be able to move quickly through it. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. If I wanted to go back into my color selection here, uh, we'll go to classic and I'm just gonna choose a bit of a darker red. Maybe I wanted to put a shade on this rose. Yes, again, I can make sure I've got my layer 31 selected. I can zoom in and I can just start to add some shade in, right? Pretty straightforward, build it up over time, come back in. And then as I mentioned before, we can tap on the eraser and we can start cutting that out. Nothing wrong with this at all. If this is the current way you're doing it and it works for you, please by all means continue that. I'm gonna show you a way that is gonna speed this up and allow you to do a lot more within each layer. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit the little plus icon and we're gonna create a layer over the top of layer 31, which is now layer 32. And then when we have layer 32 selected, the new one that is clear, we're gonna tap on that and we're gonna choose clipping mask. Now you'll see a tiny little arrow appear here and it's pointing to the layer below it. This is really, really important because anything we do on this layer, it's going to utilize the layer below it, everything that's on that. And then when we make brush strokes over the top of it on layer 32, it's only gonna be affected to what's actually showing on layer 31. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's tap on our brush tool again, make sure it's a nice large brush, yes, and make sure we have the nice dark red chosen again. Now, if I do a brush stroke outside of here anyway, you're gonna see that nothing appears at all. This is good, this is fantastic because on the layer below it, layer 31, there was no fill in this part of the artwork. You're gonna see that some fill appears here on layer 32. Just ignore that. And what we're gonna do, we are gonna tap undo on that and you can see it's gonna disappear. So when I move my uh, brush over the fill from layer 31, even though we're on 32, you're gonna see it's only gonna affect that red. This is gonna be super advantageous for you. It's gonna allow you to move very, very fast and get some work done in a really, really nice amount of time. That moves us right along to the next tip I have for you today when it comes to coloring within Procreate. And that's specifically looking at your color selection at the top here. With these flowers, I'm utilizing a lot of the same colors back and forth. Don't get me wrong, we can tap into the color selection there and go to a history and choose those. Or what you can simply do, I'm gonna use this light red and then this light blue as an example. If I wanted to switch back to that red really, really quickly, I could go to that history section or I could press and hold on that color selection there. 
it's going to revert it back to that other color. So if you can imagine you're working with two colors, maybe you are doing some shading, want to create some nice depth, you can go back and forth. This is also going to work the same for your brushes. So if you were uh, utilizing a very unique brush like a abstract brush in the Opticon effect there or the Opticon brush and you wanted to delete using the same brush because you want to get a really nice smooth even flow using the same sort of brush, you can press and hold on the eraser tool and it's going to pre-select that brush for you. So again, another nice way to keep consistency and move really fast within the design. And that moves you right along to the last point I want to talk about today when it comes to coloring in Procreate and that is coming back again to one of the advantages of working with different layers and having different objects on different layers because we can go in and make some of those changes and get a really consistent piece. So I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go ahead and uh, delete those two layers we just worked with and I'm going to turn on that original flower color layer. And as you can see here, I might not be happy with how it's looking compared to the other flowers. It is looking a little bit dark and I might want to change that. Now, if I had all of these on the same layer, I'd only be able to go in and do some of the effects I'm about to show you or make some of the adjustments on the whole entire layer. That's not going to be really great because maybe most of that layer is looking great, but one bit like this flower isn't. By having them on their own layer, it allows you to move really quick in it. And I think this whole video really has been about moving fast and being really efficient. So we've got that layer selected, layer 25. What I'm going to do, I'm going to tap on adjustments at the top of the screen. And you can go through and choose as many of these as you like and make the adjustments. So I'm actually going to go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And what I'm going to do, if I have a look, these are a little bit lighter, these flowers here. Uh, so I might just bring up that brightness just a little bit. And I might turn down the saturation just a little bit as well. Maybe a bit more brightness. Yeah. And that's looking really nice. We can tap on the screen and hit apply and then tap back on the adjustments there and it's going to disappear and that's looking really really nice so utilizing each object in their own lay is really, really going to help you out when it does come to color and procreate don't forget to utilize some of the other tips that i've showed you in this video they really can help speed up your workflow and allow you to create some pretty amazing designs in a really short amount of time and really help you nail down the overall look and feel the aesthetic of your design at a really early stages and as you're moving forward with the piece as well I hope you've enjoyed all these tips. Again, if you found this video useful, please subscribe down below. It really does mean a lot to me. It helps me grow my channel and bring you more and more videos each and every week, which I really love doing. And again, you know, any likes, comments, or shares are always appreciated as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.